Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here. Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. That's Chaplain Bob Walker. There's more than one Chaplain Bob, but actually there is a Chaplain uh, Robert Walker. I don't remember where he's at. Sometimes I've had to look up my uh, old pictures from the internet on Google Images, some old websites and what have you that uh, for some reason I can't get into them anymore, but whatever. Uh, this is going to be part six of Peace and Safety. This should be the end. It's been longer than I anticipated, but uh, I like to lay the foundation down. I'm going to also do something on that's kind of related to this about uh, Esau and Edom, about how they're going to throw the yoke off of Jacob Israel in the end times, which I feel it's along the same lines. But there was a prophecy in Genesis where Isaac prophesied that Esau Edom would throw off the yoke of Jacob Israel in the end times, and I believe it's coming to pass. There is a problem with uh, getting information on the internet because, for example, there's a guy named James White. He has so-called ministry where he, um, he bashes the King James, anybody that believes the King James Bible is God's word, he, he bashes them, you know. And uh, he defends all the other Bible versions. And trouble is, he sounds really believable. And the thing is, I found out from the, uh, the New American Standard Bible is a copyrighted version. It's put out by the Dewey Lockman Foundation. He was a member of the Masonic Lodge. I had to really dig to find this stuff. I've spent, you wouldn't believe how many hours I have spent looking into all this kind of stuff. You know, rather than watch uh, whatever the new, newest TV program is, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians or whatever garbage. But um, Dewey Lockman was a, found, uh, a Masonic Lodge, Freemason. And when I looked into the contributors for the NASB, who they had used, well, it was a hodgepodge of different, um, you know, they had rabbis and friars and Catholic priests and uh, some names in the, uh, you know, TV preachers on TBN or what have you. But lo and behold, one of the paid contributors was James White. And the NASB was one of his Bibles that he recommends as being true to God's word. Well, they use different manuscripts that don't say the same thing as the King James. And uh, I took some screenshots, put up a website, and next thing I know... They did a re-update, and James White's name as a, uh, a consultant vanished. You know, and that's what happens all the time. Matter of fact, uh, I started letting people know that uh, there was a booklet called Behind Communism by author Frank Britton, B-R-I-T-T-O-N. And I said, oh yeah, look up in a... Um, you know who ish encyclopedia well you couldn't look it up in the 1917 version because they communism hadn't been overthrown uh hadn't overthrown 
the Tsar in Russia until I think it was 19... Well, it was around the same time that they were fighting. But they did an updated 1925 version where it lists all the names of the communists in the you-know-who-ish encyclopedia. And, uh, of course, they brag about their involvement in communism and overthrowing the government of Russia. Well, when I started pointing that stuff out, guess what? All the references to that online disappeared. I mean, I can't even hardly find the 1925 version of their encyclopedia anymore. It's horrible. But you know what? That's the thing. In Matthew 24, Jesus warned there would be deception. Matthew 24, verse 1. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and the disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, there shall not be, there shall not be here, there shall not be left here, one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Sorry, the wailing wall is not the temple, part of the temple. Otherwise, Jesus is a liar. 70 AD, the Roman army came, destroyed Jerusalem and the temple, killed a whole bunch of people, and threw the temple completely down, wanting to get to all the gold in the temple. You know, so you got a choice. Believe the you-know-whos and the Wailing Wall is part of the temple or believe Jesus. My vote is Jesus. But, hey, you can follow the you-know-whos if you want to. Verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, what shall these things be, and what shall... Be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Pay attention that nobody deceives you. Take heed. Listen. That was Jesus warned there would be deception. He said, For many shall come in my name, saying, I'm Christ, and shall deceive many. And then he said, you will hear of wars, rumors of wars. Uh, see that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilences, disease and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning, the beginning of sorrows. This is just the introduction, people. But deception would be big. And then in Matthew 24, verse 9, Then shall they, and we know who they are, Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And what name is that? Jesus, that's that name. They hate that name. And then many shall be offended. Why? Because they're going to be like, whoa, dude, you mean I, I'm going to, they're going to kill me for, because I go to church? I didn't sign up for this. Uh-uh. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Just turn on TBN. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. But he that shall endure unto the end, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. Mark 13 is an excellent parallel verse for this. Verse 9. Mark 13, 9. 
But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogues ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. Now, if you read the parable of the sower, you can find that in Mark, I mean, I'm sorry, Matthew 13. Oh, let's see. Ma Matthew 13, I guess we're going to read. Let's read just eight, verse 18 on. Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When, when anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away that which was sown in his heart. This is he that receives seed by the wayside. Now he's explaining the parable that he just uh, taught earlier. You can read it on your own if you want. Verse 20, But he that received the steed into stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and anon with joy received it, yet hath not root in himself, but endureth for a while. So he endures for a while. But when tribulation or trouble or persecution ariseth because of the word, by and by he is offended. Right. I didn't sign up for this. Persecution because of Jesus? I didn't sign up for this. My pastor told me the pre-trib rapture. Now, oh, that Jesus. He must have been a, you know, the, the rabbis were right. Jesus must be a false prophet because he told us we wouldn't be here for this. Oh, yeah. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of the world of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and become unfruitful. But he that received seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit, and some bring forth, some an hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. So uh what can I tell you? Deception. All right, Matthew 24, 23. And the, the companion verse is Mark 13. I mean, it's the same thing, just uh, a different disciple, apostle, telling you what Christ said. Matthew 24, 23. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets. False Christs and false prophets. And shall show great signs and wonders. Okay, miracles, people. And shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Now, Jesus is telling you, false prophets are coming before he does. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Yeah, every eye is going to see him. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together immediately after, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All this language, the sun being darkened and the moon, that's in the book of Joel. It's also in the book of Revelation. I mean, you know, believers that, that under, have read the Bible know this stuff. They're going to know. But all the pre-tribbers, uh, they're going to be totally shocked when they find out that they've been lied to. And I, I went over why the Lord 
allows Satan to deceive and why the Lord, sometimes the Lord himself, allows people to be deceived in the previous study. And I've never, I've never been to a demon nominational church that would ever teach that stuff. Never. Absolutely never. So immediately after the tribulation of the days shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven. The power of the heavens shall be shaken and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. There are seven of them. And the seventh one is called the last trump. And Paul even tells us we'll be changed in a moment, in a, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Gee, Bob, you just don't understand. There's another last trump before the tribulation. You just don't get it. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. Yeah, okay. I guess I spent 30 years studying the Bible for nothing, all right? And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trump, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. All right, let's take a look at some stuff. Now, the Bible plainly teaches the false Christ comes first. But all these churches teach that, uh, well, not all of them, but the great majority in the Western world, uh, and I'm talking about America and possibly England, I don't know, uh, uh, the, uh, the Greek churches and what have you, they don't teach this gar uh, garbage, the Schofield, uh, Darby stuff, they don't teach this. They absolutely don't teach this. They've been persecuted. When you read the you know who -ish news, they will tell you the most anti-Semitic country in the entire world is Greece. That's what they tell you. Because guess what? The New Testament was written in Greek. And the Greek church spread the gospel to Eastern Europe. Uh, you've heard of the Greek Orthodox Church. You've got the Russian Orthodox Church. Uh, who was, The Orthodox Church was the most persecuted church in the history of the world. And the, the churches in the West will tell you, oh, well, they're the same as the Catholics. No, they're not. They share a lot of the same poison, but uh, so do the Western churches. You know, even the churches that supposedly pride themselves on not having this poison. And I'm not saying I have it all figured out. I d absolutely don't. There's a lot of things I haven't figured out. But um, the way I look at it, you know, Sifles asked Jesus when he was coming back, and he's like, he, he said he didn't know. The angels in heaven didn't know. Only God the Father knew. And like I say, if there's things Jesus doesn't know, you who, who in the heck am I? So, all right. So, the big things in the end times would be deception, false Christs, false prophets, and they would be able to show signs and wonders, miracles. And you know why this is called peace and safety? Because there's going to be a time when they're teaching peace and safety. Now, this is kind of in the Bible. When the man of sin, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, the beast, sets up his kingdom, he's going to implement... 666, the mark of the beast, in whatever form it is, um, I believe the Lord showed me it's going to be something along the lines of a microchip type thing. 
I mean, let's face it. There's already we're already carrying chips. If you've got a bank card, an ATM debit card, or a credit card, you've got a chip in it. You got a passport? There's a chip in it. A new passport. Uh, you got a um, driver's license with a real ID, 2020 or whatever it was. There's a chip in it. You know, you could lose your wallet. You could lose your purse. It could be stolen. You lose your chip. If it's in your hand or in your forehead, kind of hard to lose it. Well, you might lose your head when they chop your head off for, uh, what I forget what chapter it is in Revelation, but it says they beheld the martyrs for Jesus that were beheaded. Yeah, we'll cover that in a little bit. So, the kingdom of the beast is going to be economic. And then, it's going to be military. And we're going to cover that soon also. The false prophet is going to be able to bring down fire from the sky. Just like Elijah did. Just like Satan did to Job's servants or family, I forget exactly which, in Job chapter 1. And it's going to be religious. And uh, I know there's some argument over whether or not there's going to be a temple. I I'm kind of leaning towards there's going to be another temple. Otherwise, how could the man of sin sit in the temple of God? And obviously, Christ taught that he was the temple. He said, throw down this, you know, throw down this temple and in three days I will raise it up. And he was speaking about the temple of his body. And, you know, those that are indwelt by the Holy Spirit, we're the temple of God. So how can there be an earthly temple for the beast? You know, some will argue and, you know, but do we know? No. We won't know until it actually happens or doesn't happen. But the thing is, it would be the ultimate blasphemy of what Christ did on the cross for them to build a temple for the beast and do animal sacrifices. So, that's my thoughts. But let's get going and I'm just kind of like giving you an outline, and now I'm going to fill in the points. All right, I covered this in the last study, but I should mention again. In 1 John 2 and verse 18, it says, Little children, it is the last time, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, okay, singular, and as ye have heard that Antichrist shall come, even now are there many Antichrists, whereby we know that it is the last time. So people are looking for Antichrist, but there are many. So evidently there's going to be an ultimate fulfillment in this. All right, in John 17 and verse 12, Jesus is speaking to, um, well, he, he's in prayer, and he's speaking about Judas here. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. Judas is called the son of perdition. What does perdition mean? It means to fall. Okay. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Paul. You know why they hate Paul? Because Paul gives you a whole lot of end times information warning you about the devil's plans. 
That's why they really hate Paul. They they go after Paul and, you know, oh, well, he's a false apostle and he, you know, he's a self-proclaimed apostle and he was a devil in disguise. No, the people that hate Paul, they're devils in disguise or they've been deceived by the devils in disguise. And um, because basically they have to deny the book of Acts and they have to deny the second book of Peter. I mean, really, you they think they know more than the church did back in the days of the apostles that accepted the book of Acts as being legitimate. Idiots. So let's read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. So obviously this is talking about the second coming of Christ and and the resurrection, our gathering. Verse 2, That ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. Isn't that what Christ said in Matthew 24? Be not deceived. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day? The second coming. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. So there's going to be a falling away of the faith. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who's the man of sin? The, the book of John in the book of Revelation calls him the beast. The son of perdition. Now, Judas Iscariot was called a son of perdition. Well, the Antichrist, the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, is also called the son of perdition. What are some of his characteristics? Verse 4. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he is God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So, I don't know. Unless this happened in 70 AD, and how could this have happened in 70 AD? Some will tell you that uh, General Titus, the Roman general, uh fulfilled this in 70 AD. But General Titus was just a general. Can you imagine a general sitting in the temple of God saying he's God? Worship me? Uh, what would the Roman emperor have said? I mean, can you imagine a general in the United States Army telling Trump that he has to worship him as God? Uh, I don't think it would happen. You know, President Trump is supposed to be the uh, commander-in-chief of the army, okay? The Roman emperor was the commander-in-chief of the Roman army, the legions. So for General Titus, who was, by the way, the emperor's son, uh, sitting in the temple of God to be worshipped, showing himself that he's God, I don't think so. So if this didn't happen in the past, wouldn't this have to be the future? And wouldn't a temple be the ultimate blasphemy, doing animal sacrifices? Wouldn't that be the ultimate sa uh, blasphemy of the sacrifice that Jesus did for sin, offering him his own self as a sinless lamb of God? I think so. Um, so, All right, let's go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. More of that uh, Paul. Verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. Now, like I said, what does ignorant mean? It means you lack knowledge on something. doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you lack, lack knowledge on it. You know, when, when it comes time to being a plumber, I'm ignorant. Oh, yeah. Brain surgery, I'm ignorant. Rocket science, oh yeah. But uh, when it comes to the Bible, not so much. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, dead. Okay? 
that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Why do they have no hope? They are, they're, they're outside of Christ. They don't have Christ. They got no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, people, that's the gospel right there. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus, you know, the dead in Christ, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So, when the Lord comes back, the dead in Christ are coming with him. For Verse 16, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. Yeah, every, every secret rapture uh, happens with a shout, right? With the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, not Donald. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Now, if the pre-trib rapture was true, and everybody's up in heaven having dinner, you know, the marriage supper of the Lamb, having dinner with Christ, and people on earth getting slaughtered for their faith in Christ, beheaded for the in the tribulation, then this doesn't make any sense. How can the dead in Christ rise first? I it just you know, think about it. It would have to be until the last person who died for Christ had been finished before the dead in Christ could rise first. So, all right, verse uh, 17. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So if there comes a Messiah... And we're not caught up in the clouds to meet him in the air. It's the wrong one. Preachers should be teaching this every stinking week at on Sunday morning at church. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. That's important, people. I know I say it a lot, but it's important. Because a lot of people are going to be Fooled when the false Christ comes. Look into Project Bluebeam. Uh, they got they got um, holograms now that can fake stuff. I mean, you know, I've seen some stuff, and some people say, well, you know, it's it's just computer generated images. But I wonder, you know, I just, you know, usually their technology is 20, 30 years ahead of what they tell us what they have. They had anti-gravity stuff in the 50s. Look up the Townsend Brown, or was it Beef, Beeford Brown, anti-gravity. They had that in the 50s. In the 50s, flying disc, uh, at least in a laboratory. And then in the 60s, they started seeing flying discs all over the place. I bet you they have that stuff, and they don't even tell us. I don't know. UFO invasion, anybody? All right, let's read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, we're not going to read the whole thing, but this is the peace and safety chapter. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord, that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Now, the pre-tribbers will tell you that the day of the Lord and the day of the Christ are two different events. Thus, essentially, they're denying that Jesus Christ is Lord. Think about it. Think about it. Verse 3, For when they shall say, Peace and safety. Why is there going to be peace and safety? Because the man of sin, the son of perdition, the beast, the antichrist, is going to bring in his version of world peace. There's going to be a one world government, political, economic, and religious, and financial. It's going to be an all-encompassing 
kingdom of evil. For when they, not us, them, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And, you know, in verse 2, for, you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them. Verse 4, But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. For ye, uh, ye are all the children of the night. For, I'm sorry, ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day, we are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and in helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, that's right. We're not appointed to wrath. But Satan's wrath is not God's wrath. There's a difference. So when they say peace and safety, now how are they going to pull this off? Well, that's in a lot of that's in the book of Revelation. So we're going to go there. 